Okay, this is a Marantz PM44 SC, the SC designation of a special edition. It was um, an attempt to make an audio file amplifier to run with the uh, the Pioneer A400, uh, sort of 1990s amplifier. Um, a good amplifier inside. They were fairly low power. I think they're about rated about 50 watts RMS per channel. I've had to rebuild the output stage on this. When I bought the amplifier about a year ago, these emitter followers were open circuit. I replaced those with lower value emitter followers because I didn't have anything in my box. Um, these are 100 milliamp. Uh, I think this. I think the manual or the original ones were 200 milliamp. Um, this bias, bias transistor was open circuit, causing the output stage to randomly sort of draw up massive amounts of current. One thing to be said about this amplifier is it's extremely robust in a lot of ways. Um, when the output transistors were biased hard on, rather than blowing the output transistors, it just blew the input fuse. You could replace the input fuse and the transistors always seem to survive. They're probably those very heavy duty Sankin transistors, overrated really for the power of the amplifier, which is only about 50 watts RMS. So I've rebiased the output stage to about 35 millivolts across the emitter followers. Um, the amplifier is sort of just about the right temperature for an idle state. Uh, I've got no power going through it at the moment. Um, I know a lot of people like to turn the bias right the way up um, to uh, no end, really. I mean, basically, if the output transistors are turned on, you're not going to get um, any improvement in audio quality. You might imagine you do, but if the bias is, if the transistors are turned on, you won't improve the distortion of, of the crossover distortion or anything like that. You will get the amplifier to warm up slightly, and I think that probably does affect the sound quality slightly as the amplifier warms up. I don't know why, but it, maybe it's psychological. But uh, I certainly think the amplifiers do sound slightly different when they warm up. Anyway, uh, the purpose of this video is to test the output stage for um, distortion and um, make sure it's load tolerant before I sell it. Um, so what I've done now is I set up the uh, the HP um, audio analyzer and scope, and uh, presently we're running the uh, Marantz into an eight ohm fairly inductive load. Actually, these are wire band resistors, so they're quite a good represent re representation. Cut that out of a, a, um, a proper transducer, a proper loudspeaker. So the idea is to run this amplifier up, take a, a power figure, and then just to see how it copes with a 4 ohm load, and interesting enough to see how well it copes on single channel uh, drive. If you get a large swing of voltage on the single on the single channel drive as you do on both channels driven, that usually means that the power supply is sagging um, and hasn't, you know, hasn't really got a big powerful enough power supply. Um, it's actually quite a small, tiddly little transformer in here, actually. Um, doesn't look very capable of doing much. But then again, it isn't a particularly high-powered amplifier. So let's have a go. Let's run it up and see what it does. Um, I'd, real, the real interest for me is the distortion figure. I'm not really that interested in its performance. All I'm interested in is the figure's good, and uh, we haven't got any uh, excessive distortion. So, OK, I'll wind the power up, and I'll run it up just before clipping. There you go. So back it off at one percent distortion on the uh, on the Hewlett Packard. Looks like the pot's a little bit jumpy there. A bit of pot cleaning there could. There's a good. It's often quite good to do things like this because you can actually see faults that you can't always hear. Okay, so the distortions. Let's just check the switches. Yeah, I think I've probably got a dodgy switch here, so we'll have to go through all that and uh, make sure all the switches are okay. But. Uh, Okay, distortion is around 1%. Um, mains input current is half, a, just under half an amp. So let's get a, a, a power rating. So special, 19.0 uh, special. So, okay, it's making f just under 60 watts into 8 ohms, which is good. Um, it's probably about what the rating is. I think it might be rated at 50 watts, 60 watts. Um, but that's looking good. Uh, can't see any problem there, apart from maybe a slightly noisy pot. So that's good. Um, amplifier still running fairly cool. No, no sign of any duress there. Um, just making sure the connections are good on the loads. That looks good. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to single channel mode, single channel drive. Okay. So I'm only driving the right hand channel now, and I can increase the voltage. You see, increase the output now, just the clipping. So we go to distortion again, go back to about 1%. Yeah, this 
this pot is definitely a little bit noisy I need to clean this pot the saucer figure just off clipping is actually very good Okay, so let's say that's around just just about one percent. It's very jumpy. So let's have a look now. So nineteen point zero special, and now we're putting out seventy watts. So we've gone up ten watts um, by in switching to one channel, which is actually not bad. That's uh, not a not a big drop off. So obviously the transformer's fairly capable into a uh, eight ohms and. Uh, it shows that the power supply is pretty resilient. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to jump at this resistor across here. And what that does is obviously short out one of the resistors that are wired in series to drop me into 4 ohms. And then I'm going to run the power up again, back up to clipping now. It will clip slightly earlier than it did before. And straight away the current's gone and the actual amplifier is howling a bit now, one amp, so yeah, it makes sense, double the power. So what I'll do is I'll go to distortion. I'm not going to keep this running as long as in 8 ohms because it's quite stressful on the amplifier. Okay, 1% distortion there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go, um, I need to measure the power again, so I need to do 19.04 special. And that gives me the, the 19.0 gives me the uh, special function for power. 19.00 is a standard for the 8 ohms. If you put 19.04, that will give me the uh, output power into 4 ohms. So let's see what it will do into 4 ohms. And in perfect amplifier, I mean, we got 60 watts into 8 ohms. We should be getting 120 into 8, into 4, but we won't. We'll get probably around 100 watts. Okay, just off clipping. Okay, it's not great actually, it's 83 watts, so there's been it's quite a drop off in power, and that would suggest that's all that boils down to the, the, the transformer not being able to uh, make enough header volts. Just out of interest, let's see if the mains voltage drops. I'm increasing the load now, and you see the also the header volts is falling away slightly as the uh, variac drops back. I'll increase the voltage slightly just to compensate for that. I'll take another measurement. Okay, yeah, we were about 85 watts, so that's not bad. What I'll do now is I'll go into uh, single channel mode. Now, this the voltage should come up quite a lot more now because the power supply is the problem. If the power supply is only driving one uh, channel, then the uh, the volt more voltage will be available in the secondary the output of the transformer. Therefore, we should get a, a higher peak to peak reading and a, and a higher output power. So it's one channel mode. There you go, 100 watts. So there you go, that proves that it's basically the power supply is the weak link in the in the amplifier. It's not to say that this amplifier is a poor performer by a longer stretch, but um, a lot of the other amplifiers are actually extremely capable of driving um, into a very, uh, very severe loads without a lot of drop-off in performance, but you usually need quite a bit bigger transformer than that. That is a small transformer for an amplifier this size. Um, one of the Sonys I, I tested in a previous video is was much more capable and would, would drive um, 4 ohms without any problem at all. But um, yeah, I mean that's uh, just a quick run through of this amplifier. Quite, know, um, quite popular in its day, sold quite a lot, got lots of good reviews from the Hi-Fi magazines. So uh, it's not a bad amplifier. It'll be cleaned up and, and uh, cleaned the pots up. It's obviously um, proven its worth by it hasn't blowing up into a 4 ohm, so I'm quite happy with it uh, uh, being reliable. Um, and uh, yeah, thanks for watching and uh, more to come. And uh, happy Christmas and happy new year to all my uh, all my followers.